Ah, uh, you made this dish? My husband frowned at the dinner table when he came home late at night. Ah, uh, good thing I already ate out. I can't stand putting your dirty looking meals in my mouth. Throw all of this away. He laughed and headed to the bathroom while I held back tears. I had attended a cooking class hoping to make a dish that would please him, but it seemed foolish now. A few days later, I talked with a woman I had become friends with in the class. I'm attending to make delicious lunches for my boyfriend. That's nice. You seem so happy. I'm envious. This is my boyfriend. She showed me a photo of her boyfriend, his arm around her and smiling broadly. That man was my husband. I'll give you some advice. I know what he likes. That night, I made a hamburger. What's this? You made this again? My husband froze, looking at the dinner table. I gave a faint smile. My name is Natalie. I've been married to my husband, Seth, for five years, and we live together without any children. I'm about to turn 35, so I've been persistently asking him to seriously consider fertility treatments. Although he originally said he wouldn't mind if we couldn't have children, he gradually became colder. The wedding ring he used to wear every day is now tucked away in a drawer in our bedroom. I felt lonely comparing myself to married friends who have children. That's when I remembered something my husband said before we got married. His parents divorced when he was in middle school and he was taken in by his mother. He started cooking to help her out, even making his own lunches. His classmates would compliment his lunches saying they looked delicious, but he was envious of how they took for granted that their mothers made their lunches every day, even if they were just frozen food. Recently, he's been working late and eating dinner before coming home, but before that, he'd basically cooked dinner for us since he got home earlier than me. In the mornings, we both ate light meals, so I hardly cooked. He used to say he was happy when I enjoyed the meals he made, so I took advantage of that. That's where I went wrong. He must have longed for a family meal, but I made him hold back. That being said, I had no real cooking experience since I used to buy my meals when I lived alone. I suddenly remembered a cooking class near my office and decided to attend. There's no point in cooking if no one will eat it. I threw the hamburger, which was all set to be cooked, directly into the trash for his portion. After work last week, I went straight to a trial class and signed up for the cooking class on the spot. Since the dish I learned in the trial class was his favorite hamburger, I decided to make it for our weekend dinner together. He couldn't go out for drinks on weekdays due to overtime, so he spent more time going out with friends and co-workers on weekends. He had a drinking party on Saturday, but his plans for Sunday were only during the day, so I decided to go ahead with the surprise. I chose a cooking class I could attend after work and lied about having late night drinking parties with friends so I could secretly go. I was looking forward to surprising him with the hamburgers and seeing his happy reaction, but it backfired. While I was waiting for him to come home, I received a message saying that they were having so much fun that they decided to continue drinking. Today he went to a barbecue with his friends. Looking back, I should have known that he would eat out, but I had hoped that if he ate my homemade meal, something might change. But I didn't realize that. I cooked and ate my portion alone, but it was so delicious that I couldn't help but wish he had tasted it too. It made me even sadder. But tomorrow is a weekday and he won't be able to eat dinner with me and I didn't have the courage to eat alone again so I had no choice but to throw his portion away. When he came home tipsy, he said, It smells good. He asked me what I had for dinner. I made hamburgers. You made hamburgers? How many hours did it take? Are you not sick from eating it half cooked? I'm fine. Oh, good thing I already ate out. He laughed and headed to the bathroom. He was so drunk, so it couldn't be helped. He probably thought I'd playfully respond with something like, Don't say anything rude, or I won't let someone who talks like that eat it. 
I was telling myself that it wasn't because he didn't want to eat my cooking, but I couldn't muster the energy to joke back while holding back tears. I considered quitting the cooking class, but I had already bought a package deal. So I decided to continue attending for a change of pace. More than three months have passed since then, but I haven't been able to have him eat the food I made, nor have I been able to tell him that I'm attending a cooking class, partly because of the fear that he might reject it. As usual, he's hardly ever at home, so I'm just as lonely. I hope that making friends in the cooking class might make a difference, but the format of booking lessons on convenient days means the members change, and even if we have fun talking, we don't get to the point of exchanging contact information. But after attending several times, I became friends with a girl named Angela, who is nearly 10 years younger than me. She's a very nice girl who is cheerful, friendly, and listens intently to what others have to say. The first time that we met, she seemed so clumsy that even the teacher struggled to teach her, and I ended up helping her while cooking my own dish. I inadvertently blurted out that it was okay if she couldn't cook and that she didn't have to push herself to learn. But she said, I really want to be able to make a sandwich. Her boyfriend loves cooking and often cooks for her. He once said that his dream was to have a picnic in the park and eat a sandwich made by his girlfriend, so she thought she had to make that dream come true. I wonder if many people who love cooking, like Seth, are particular about sandwiches. She had also told me that her previous boyfriends were all terrible men, cheating on her or disappearing after borrowing money, and she had been through a lot. She said, I want to make an effort to be happy this time. I regret it prying too much, but she invited me to attend the class together as friends, and we became friends. But there was one problem. The cooking class we went to allowed us to go to any branch, and there were several in the city, so we could go to one near our workplaces on work days, and one near our homes on days off. That day, she couldn't find a lesson that fit her schedule at her regular branch and had joined the lesson at my branch. She said she would adjust her schedule to attend the branch I was going to, but her regular branch was near Seth's workplace. I hadn't told Seth that I was attending a cooking class yet, so I was worried, but I decided to go to the branch near his workplace with her. As we attended the class together once a week, she started to feel like a little sister to me and I would listen to her boyfriend's stories and meddle in her affairs. I was worried that she might be deceived again when I heard that her boyfriend was a supervisor at work and nearly 10 years older, so I demanded to see a picture of him. But he apparently didn't like having his pictures taken and the only one she had was of his arm, which had been captured in a photo of his cooking. That day, after finishing the lesson, she stopped halfway to the station where we usually walked together. She had forgotten her laptop at work and wanted to go get it, so she said, Well, thanks for today. I'm going back to my office now. I could have just gone home, but I was worried about letting a girl like her, who seemed easily deceived, go home alone with so many drunk people around at that hour. Despite her insistence that she was fine, I forcibly followed her and she stood in front of a company that looked familiar, saying, We're here! Do you work here? Yes, I work in sales administration here. It turned out to be Seth's workplace. Suddenly, my brain went into overdrive, connecting the dots that had been scattered before. The similarity in Seth's attachment to sandwiches and her boyfriend's. Seth, who had been promoted and returned to the sales department as a manager, had more overtime. Angela, a sales administrator at this company who sometimes referred to her boyfriend as manager. Realizing that my husband and Angela's boyfriend were the same person, I was confused. Unaware of my confusion, she said, I'll be right back, and went inside. In addition to the fact that Seth was having an affair, I was devastated to learn that Angela, who I had come to think of as a sister, was the other woman. Did she not know he was married? Or did she approach him knowing that he was my husband? 
time flew by as I thought about it, and she came back with someone. The moment I saw their figures, I quickly hid behind the company's information board. I didn't know you worked this late. Hey, are you saying I'm always slacking off? On the days I go to your house, I leave early and finish my work the next day. Is that so? I didn't know that. It's fine. I want to see you. As the two of them talked intimately, my head went blank. I barely managed to send a message to Angela, who was looking for me, saying, "Sorry, I have to go home now." Oh, it seems the woman I told you about earlier suddenly had to go home. Well then, maybe I'll stop by your house for a bit. The two of them walking towards the station with their arms around each other would undoubtedly look like a couple to anyone who saw them. But I am his wife. That night, Seth didn't come home until past midnight. On Sunday night, I was standing in the kitchen. Actually, I've been practicing my cooking. So that's why you made hamburgers before, he said, still looking at his smartphone. He claimed to have been meeting with a friend that day, but this time he had come home before dinner. I think it's much better now. As I lined up the dishes on the table, he continued to play with his smartphone happily, never looking at me. He was probably exchanging messages with her. It's ready. I'll be the judge of that," he said, taking his seat with an air of superiority. When he saw the dishes on the table, he froze like an ice statue. "What's wrong? Hurry up and eat, and tell me what you think." He tried to grab his fork, but fumbled and dropped it on the floor. "I was just surprised because it looks so nice. You can use my fork here." He began to eat the meat and potatoes with his trembling hand, and finally, in a voice barely audible across the table, he said, "It's delicious." How about the spinach salad and soup? He said in the same small voice as before. It's delicious. I'm glad. You said you wanted to take my homemade sandwich to a picnic, right? I'll make it next time. So let's go. For some reason, he spat out the soup he had been drinking. Then the intercom rang suddenly. Ignoring me as I tried to check the intercom monitor, he said, "I'll get it," and ran to the entrance. I went to the entrance a little after him, and he was frozen once again, holding the door open. That's because Angela was standing there. W- why are you here? I called her over. I wanted to ask you which one tasted better, Seth. Which meat and potatoes did you like better? The ones I made for lunch or the ones your wife made? I was told you like classic home cooked meals like meat and potatoes and hamburgers. He seemed to collapse and sat down on the spot. It's no wonder. He had eaten the same meat and potatoes, spinach salad, and soup with the same seasoning and presentation at her apartment at lunchtime. I don't know if he noticed, but we had prepared the same dishes for this day, so they should have looked identical. It must have been terrifying for him. Well, they should taste the same. We're both attending the same cooking class. What? You never told me anything about that. I always had you cook for me, so I wanted to surprise you by suddenly making delicious meals. I do apologize for surprising you in this way. I wanted to fulfill your dream of going on a picnic with the sandwich made by your girlfriend. After finding out that Angela's boyfriend was Seth, I was troubled. If she was a wicked woman who approached him knowing that I was his wife, I wanted to confront him with evidence. But when I thought about it calmly, she was clearly the one who was deceived. When I finally told her the truth, she said she had heard he was divorced. In fact, she joined the company after he stopped wearing his wedding ring, and she thought he was not married because he didn't wear a ring. She liked him because he often cared for and talked to her, but she gave up once when she heard from a colleague that he was married. But when they happened to be alone together, he apparently told her. Actually, I'm divorced. 
but I don't want to worry anyone, so keep it a secret. See, I'm not wearing my ring. When she asked why he only told her, he said, Because I like you. To make matters worse, he told her to hide their relationship from everyone else, as it might cause problems at work if they were found out. Anyway, you must have noticed that she had feelings for you and thought you could deceive her, right? I was stupid too. Forget picnic, we never even dated anywhere other than my room. Come on, say something. Looking flustered, he started to apologize profusely. I'm sorry. It's just that you were always talking about having children and I was stressed out. Then a cute girl joined the company and I got carried away. See, she said we've only met in her room, right? I wasn't serious about her. He yelled at a tearful Angela. You better get out of here right now. What do you think you're doing? My low voice made him shudder. When we get divorced, I'll continue to live here. I'm glad it's in my name. This apartment is one that I've been renting since before we got married. Before we got married, he was living with his parents and moved in here, and that's when we started living together. We continued living here because we didn't want to move when his job required a transfer. You'll have no place to go home to even if you want to. Will you apologize to your mother and go back to her house? But I wonder if she'll forgive you. His mother had divorced his father due to an affair, and she had been harassed quite a bit by his mistress. Every time we visited her during Christmas and other occasions, she told him, If you ever have an affair, I'll disown you. I'm going to get the divorce papers with her now, so take some time to think about what you'll do next. I wonder if someone like you can get a decent house to rent, though. You might have to live in a run-down house. He had lived alone for a while, but after failing in an investment, he took on debt to try and recover that money by investing in something else, which also failed. Finally, he even fell behind on his rent. His mother had to beg to relatives and collect money to repay the debt. Wait, please don't go. But you're the one who told her to leave. I left the apartment hand in hand with Angela. Thank you. Thanks for leaving the house with me even though I'm the other woman and you must hate me. Seeing her cry again after saying that, my heart ached. As she said, I already had the divorce papers and didn't need to go get them. It's fine. Thanks to you, I got to see his terrified face and it was refreshing. The real reason I came out with her wasn't that I was worried about her. The meat and potatoes on the table were still there, so I left him alone in the room to make him feel despair once more. He soon lost his job as well. Not knowing what he might do to Angela, I called the company and explained everything, making sure they knew she was just a victim. He was also transferred to a remote rural location, which seemed unnatural, and the rumors quickly spread throughout the company. Unable to endure the personnel changes that seemed like demotions, he resigned voluntarily. Angela also tried to resign out of guilt, but her co-workers liked her, so they convinced her to stay. Somehow, Angela and I both enjoyed the cooking classes, so I decided to use the compensation money I received from Seth to purchase additional vouchers for her and continue attending the classes together. On weekends, we cooked elaborate dishes at home, enjoying them with wine or champagne, and relished our single lives.